in an attempt to counter program the final Republican primary debate before the Iowa caucuses on Monday, failed former President Donald Trump held a town hall. The town hall was on Fox News. The town hall was hosted by Martha McCallum and Brett Bayer. And this town hall was such a disaster that even the friendly anchors were unable to save Trump from himself. We're going to jump right into this. Trump was asked about the report that while he was president, his businesses profited to the tune of millions of dollars from foreign governments, including China. Trump straight up admits it and says he got that money for good reason, including that the plugs, the plugs at his hotels are really good. I guess the Chinese are just fixated on good plugs and Trump's hotel has them. Take a listen to this. Mr. President, before we wrap up this, you know, there is this report, House Democrats uh, documents that say that nearly eight million dollars in payments to your businesses from foreign governments, China included, Saudi Arabia, while you were in office. They say Article one of the Constitution says you can't accept money from foreign governments while president. Would you pledge to divest from your business in a second term as other presidents have done? So that's what I, they're that's what no, they're reporting. I own hotels all over the I don't get free money. Somebody rents a hotel room, et cetera, et cetera. Much money I gave back. In fact, I didn't have to do it. You know, George Washington was a very rich man. People don't know that. <laughs> this uh, remember <laughs> the the question was, okay, you did this thing during your first term that was a violation of the Constitution. Will will you pledge not to do it during the second term? And he talks about <laughs> George Washington being rich. In his essentially White House, which wasn't built, but they had an office. He had a business desk and he had a country desk right next to each other. You're allowed to do that. I didn't do it. I put everything in trust. And if I have a hotel and somebody comes in from China, that's a small amount of money. And it sounds like a lot of money. That's a small. But I was doing services for that. People were staying in these massive hotels, these beautiful hotels, because I have the best hotels. I have the best clubs. I have the best clubs. I have, the, I have great stuff. And they stay there and they pay. I don't get $8 million for doing nothing like Hunter. I don't get. I don't get five hundred thousand dollars. I don't get five hundred. Okay, sorry, my correction there. It's clubs, not plugs. He 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 was bragging about the clubs, not the plugs. But understand, he's not denying the report. Trump is acknowledging. Yeah, I got millions. I got millions from China. To me, it wasn't a ton of money, uh, and I was giving things in exchange. These, it was not just money coming in. It was money that was being paid into my businesses for services rendered, uh, acknowledging the report and not saying I won't do it again in my second term. Trump with a cognitive misfire saying <laughs> that his travel ban prevented terrorist attacks in 2016. Small problem with that. He wasn't president in 2016. In 2016, they had no terrorists that they know of that came into the country. None. You know, I had the travel ban. They, in there you go. In 2016, no terrorists came in because of Trump's travel ban. Trump did not become president until 2017. Of course, it was Barack Obama who was president at that point in time, really struggling to keep the timeline straight. Fox News hosts uh, tried to figure out who is going to be Trump's vice president. Interestingly, Trump says he has already selected his vice president, but he declines to name him or her. Let me just ask you a follow up on that about who would be in your in your cabinet, in your administration. Mm -hmm. If you are the nominee, which I know you expect to be, who would be in the running for a vice president? Well, I can't tell you that, really. I mean, I know who it's going to be. Give us a hint. I'll give you We'll do another show sometime. Well, what about any of the people who you've run against? Would you be open to mending fences with oh, any sure, of them? Oh, sure, I will. I will. I've already started like Christy better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Christy, Christy for vice president? I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. That would be an upset. Christy for vice president. You know, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, I'd like to announce. All right. So Donald Trump has all it, it is actually sort of an interesting revelation that he has already chosen the person. The the obvious follow up is, does that person know that you have selected them? Have they accepted? Have they agreed? That's a pretty fascinating moment. I have to tell you, Trump uh, two days ago said that it will be bedlam in this country if he is not granted total immunity for his actions while president. When he was asked by a reporter, you're not talking. Will you denounce violence? He didn't do it. 
He was asked about it here. And I think Trump says here that violence would not be acceptable. I hope that that's what he's saying. You no, know, in recent days, you seem to issue a warning that if in the courts and even the U.S. Supreme Court, if they didn't treat you fairly, that maybe there would be bedlam in the country. Use that word, bedlam in the country. And in the last two days, at the same time, in the last two speeches, President Biden is focusing his campaign on the threat to democracy and political violence. Take a listen. I'll say what Donald Trump won't. Political violence is never, ever acceptable in the United States political system. Never, never, never. All right, so to Robert's question, this is clearly a focus of the Biden campaign. So can you say tonight that political violence is never acceptable? Well, of course, that's right. And of course, I'm the one that had very little of it. <laughs> Take a look. We were able to keep political violence inspired by me down to a very low level during my presidency. I mean, what a thousand defendants from January 6th. Fine. Look at wars again. I didn't start. I wasn't involved in wars. We beat the hell out of ISIS. We won 100 percent. We brought our troops back home. All right. So uh, obviously Trump unable to stay on track. But uh, to his credit, I guess he's sort of saying political violence is bad. I don't know. He was asked about Chris Christie suspending his campaign. And he says about the hot mic moment that Chris Christie is right about Nikki Haley being unable to win. That was the big news uh, late today. The former governor of New Jersey dropped out of the race in New Hampshire. You saw it there. Uh, there's a lot of speculation now that there could be a combining of forces of the people who supported him. He had about 12 percent there. And by some estimates, you're ahead by an average of 14 in the real clear politics average polling in New, in New Hampshire. So if if that 12 goes to Nikki Haley, she could give you a run for your money there. Well, you know, you have Democrats in New Hampshire and they vote and you have independents in New Hampshire in large numbers and they vote. And I have polls that show me leading by a tremendous amount in New Hampshire and a lot in Iowa and nationwide. We're leading by almost 60 points. So I'm not exactly worried about it. I understand New Hampshire very well. I've won it twice and did very well with New Hampshire. I love the people. They love me, I think. Uh, we did a good <laughs> job for New Hampshire economically and even from the standpoint of the military taking care of the vets. And I think we're going to do very well in New Hampshire. Now, you know, Chris Christie was. Uh, in and uh, he got a hot mic. I heard about. I thought actually the bigger story wasn't the fact that he super hot mic dropped out. Nobody cared too much about that. But he had a hot mic where he was talking to somebody about uh, the weather, and he happened to say that she doesn't have what it takes. She'll be creamed in the in the election. And I mean, I know her very well, and I happen to believe that Chris Christie's right. That's one of the few things he's been right about. All right. So Trump agreeing with Chris Christie, indeed, indeed. Um, it will be uh, difficult for Nikki Haley to win. Another interesting moment. They did take questions from the crowd because it was, after all, a town hall. Trump uh, was asked by a DeSantis voter. Why do you personally demean so many of the people who work for you? And he went on to demean all sorts of different people. Uh, quite a moment here. Take a look. Um, that's absolutely true. So let's let's hear from Jane Jack who is a teacher from Rhodes, Iowa. Jane, thank you so much for being here. And and you said that you plan to caucus for DeSantis, but you're mm -hmm. not completely decided. Is that right? No, I, I am firmly, I will um, be caucusing for DeSantis. Um, but I will say, Mr. President, I am extremely grateful that in your first term, you accomplished so many great things, but it was also with the help of many great people. Right. Since that time, you have publicly criticized and personally demeaned so many of them. If you're given four more years, how will you convince good people to take the risk of working with you? Right. So I have a lot of people that want to work with me. I have people calling just as I'm getting on the stage. I had a call from two of the very most important people <laughs> in the military who want to come to work for me. Everybody wants to come to work for us. Uh, we're going to have no trouble. We had great people. We had a couple that were not great, stiffs, as I would call them, but that's true with anybody. But now I've gotten to know Washington. I've gotten to know the people. I know the best. I know the smart ones, the dumb ones, the weak ones, the strong ones. And I think you're going to see something like you've never seen before. And the people in this room know it. We did an, we did an amazing job. And uh, the reason, you know, we have support is because of the job we did. Now, you like Ron DeSantis, but he wouldn't even be around today. He'd be working in a pizza shop or perhaps a law firm 
if I didn't endorse him. You know, I endorsed him, took him from nothing to winning an election. Isn't that the best? The voters say, I mean, listen, and who cares, right? I mean, Trump doesn't care. The voter goes, yeah, I kind of don't love that you demean people. And uh, I'm supporting DeSantis, but I appreciate you. And he goes, yeah, DeSantis would be working in a pizza parlor if it weren't for me. Good for Trump, right? I mean, he's not going to be pushed into uh, into into behaving differently by by a voter in the crowd. Uh, another voter in the crowd asking Trump about uh, abortion. And this was a very interesting moment because Trump takes credit for terminating Roe v. Wade, of course, through his Supreme Court picks, something which is very unpopular, quite frankly. And Ron DeSantis, because you both talk a lot about pro-life, your record. And that's my number one issue. And, and the cry of my heart Good. is justice for all people. And I've been you know, vocal and celebrating with you all of your pro-life victories from the past. But then in this campaign, you've also blamed pro-lifers for some of the GOP losses around the country. And you've called heartbeat laws like Iowa's terrible. And so I'd just like some clarity on this because it's such an important question to me. Okay. Yeah, I'd it's a great question, right? Sir, you seem to be taking both sides of the issue. You take credit for getting Roe v. Wade overturned and you celebrate that. But you also say that extreme anti-choice bills like the ones we're seeing in so many places are bad. Which is your position? And the truth is, like with Trump, it's my position is whatever will get me votes. I'd like for you to reassure me that you can protect all life, every person's right to life without compromise. So that's a great question. I appreciate it, too. You wouldn't be asking that question, even talking about the issue, because for 54 years they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it. And I'm proud to have done it. Is it? They wanted to get it back, right? You wouldn't be have that. There would be no question. Nobody else was going to get that done but that, me. Yeah. And we did it. And we did something that was a miracle. So Trump here saying, but, and again, it's all who's in the room, right? This voter is very anti choice. So Trump goes, I'm the guy who did the biggest anti choice thing in the world. In another environment where it's clear that the country is kind of like, wait, we want abortion to be legal in most cases. Then Trump goes, oh, no, these extreme things that they're doing in some of the states are bad. He'll take whatever position is useful to him. Another disastrous town hall, but he's going to run away with Iowa. We'll have results Monday night, Tuesday morning. So much of the news that we read every day is driven by clickbait headlines, even from reputable sources, and we'll end up stuck in these echo chamber algorithms. And it's not a good thing at all. Our sponsor, Ground News, will pull you out of that situation. Ground News will give you a summary of every breaking news story. It'll show you how the left is covering it, how the right is covering it, how the center is covering it, assuming that they are covering it. If not, it'll tell you that. And then you can make your own mind up. For example, Ground News is showing me here how right wing news outlets have concocted this narrative that George Soros is some kind of Hamas apologist. Of course, only right wing news websites are pushing the story. And Ground News shows you who owns the news outlets. The New York Post is owned by the Murdochs. The Millennial Post is run by Matthew Aziali. They even have a feature called My News Bias, which is basically a dashboard for your specific news diet, shows you what you're reading, how reliable it is, whether you have blind spots you should be aware of. It's only available through the Ground News Vantage plan. You can get it for 30 percent off. That makes it about five bucks a month when you go to ground.news slash Pacman. The link is right down below.